we're going to watch some videos on link building. So if you're ready for this, I'm just going to go to YouTube. I'm going to find the top people that are ranking for web design. Or sorry, what am I saying? For link building. And we're just going to go through and see what they're doing. Sound good? So it looks like number one is Brian Dean. We got Brand Fishkin. We got Neil Patel and some other people. So let's start with let's start with Brian Dean. Building, you add value today. You're gonna hold on. Learn exactly how to build powerful backlinks to your site. In fact, I've used the strategies I'm about to show you to get links from sites Everybody like hear this Forbes, right? TechCrunch, Inc., Entrepreneur, and more. I'm Brian Dean the founder of Backlinko. And today I'm gonna to show you nine proven link building strategies and some advanced techniques I've never heard anyone else talk about. Keep watching. Here it goes. We have a lot to cover in today's video, so let's get started. I started my first blog. I've seen Brian Dean's course and what he teaches. He has some valuable points, definitely, um, especially with how he naturally builds links by creating content based on what other um, people in your industry are going to be wanting to link to, not just your clients. Your clients aren't going to link to you, right? Um, but let's see what he's going to say in this video right here. Blog way back in 2010. Back then, spammy black hat link building was all the rage. In fact, my go-to strategies were things like article directories and link pyramids. Link pyramid? That sounds amazing. These black hat links worked okay until Google unleashed its penguin update. This update wiped out 98% of my Google traffic literally overnight. That's when I decided to go all in on white hat SEO. And thanks to the white hat link building strategies I'm about to share with you, my organic traffic shot up like a rocket ship. I also started to rank for competitive keywords like video SEO, keyword research, on page SEO, and more. Look. Brian Dean is ranking for some gnarly stuff. I don't do not get me wrong. That is 100% accurate. And I'm sure his links probably are a big reason why he's ranking. But I will also say that a huge, huge reason why he's ranking as well is because of the massive content he creates uh, for the keywords that he's targeting, like a massive and the internal links that he's doing to his new posts as well. So without further ado, let's kick things off with strategy number one link roundups. Imagine if people publish blog posts for the sole purpose of linking out to quality content, the type of quality content that you already publish on your site. That would be awesome, right? Fortunately for us, that's a real thing. And they're called link roundups. Here's an example of a link roundup. So what are link roundups exactly? Link roundups are daily, weekly, or monthly blog posts that curate and link to outstanding content. For example, this is a link that I recently built from a roundup. Now let's break down the exact process that I used. So one thing I want to say about this is when you're doing link roundups, you're getting a bunch of links from, or sorry, you're getting a link from a, a web page that's linking out to a bunch of other websites. So anytime you have like, let's say your link next to like a hundred other links, it really does devalue that link that you're getting, especially if you're getting placed lower down on a blog post. So uh, the other thing you want to think about too is how many of these link roundups are happening all the time and are people paying to get on here? This method, to be honest, out of all the link building tactics, if I were to try to go and use one, would not be one that I would want to do. To get that link. First, you need to find link roundups in your industry. And here are a few search strings that work really well. Just pop these search strings into Google and you should find tons of high quality roundups. And once you find a link roundup that seems like a good fit, it's time to pitch your content. Here's the email script that I personally use. You wanna- So let's look at this for a second. Hi site owner name, I just stumbled upon on your roundup name this afternoon, good stuff. Uh, I, I'm just reaching out because I recently published a content description that might be a good fit, either way. So I don't know about you guys, but whenever I see something like this, the first thing I wanna do is, is like literally reply fuck you because I hate when people send this stuff to me. Now, obviously people who are doing like link roundups or whatever this is are probably doing it for the purpose of being able to get as many links out as possible for whatever reason. But 
um, you know, I honestly like if you look at this, like, you know, this just seems like something that I would not want to read and something that I would also not want to write and send out to a bunch of people. Even if it was automated, I again still think that this is something that's just really kind of building liabilities when you could be spending your time doing something else. I send this script to the person that runs the roundup. As you can see, this script isn't pushy or spammy. I just let the person know that my content exists and gently suggest that they include it in their next. The other thing that you need to think about here is that he is Brian Dean, right? He has a ton of authority. Him getting links like this is probably like if you get an email from Brian Dean, chances are you're probably going to respond to it, right? Because Brian Dean's like got a shit ton of authority, right? And if you give him a favor, he'll probably give you a favor back. But if you're getting like a random outreach from some person who's just trying to build links in different niches, chances are nobody's going to give a fuck. They're just going to they're just going to ignore you. Next round up. And if your post is a good fit for that person's roundup, you'll get a sweet link. That's all there is to it. With that, it's time for our second strategy, broken link building. Broken link building is one of my all time favorite link building strategies. Why? You see, when most people build links, they send generic pitches that offer zero value. Can I have a link please? Thank you, send. But with broken link building, you add value to someone's website then ask for a link. Here's the step-by-step -step process. First, add Check My Links to Google Chrome. Check My Links is a free Google Chrome extension that finds broken links on any page. I'll show you how to use this tool in a minute. But for now, let's move on. So this method's really bad because one, not even just the method, but, but because like Using check my links takes so much time. And if you're gonna be manually scanning pages like this, you're you're like at that point, like an Upwork worker, like or a Fiverr worker. Uh, I'll show you guys a better method, but just watch how he does this in a second. To step number two, find a site that you wanna get a link from. You probably already have a few sites in mind. If not, just Google keywords related to your industry. The sites that show up in the search results are great sites to get backlinks from. For example, last year I wanted to build links to this list of SEO tools. So I Googled things like SEO checklist and SEO tutorial. Next, it's time to check for broken links. To do this, just visit a few pages on the site you just found and run the Check My Links extension. This will reveal all the broken links on that page. Finally, let the site owner... Okay, so let me just show you how this works. So what he's saying, is he's saying go find a topic similar to a keyword you want to rank. So let's just say we want to rank for the tool we were just looking at, best SEO tools 2018, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Google. We're going to plug this in and we're going to click on something here. And we're just going to scan this with broken link checker. Let me see if I can get it. Hold on. Let me go just go download broken link checker. So he's saying basically download this thing go through a bunch of different pages uh get it is it enabled what the heck is broken link checker one second there it is hs is it in here hs uh i'm not seeing it we have to remove some of these. Why can't I see it? Is this it? A? Okay, so it's apparently that A. I'm just gonna press that. And we're just gonna look through and find broken links, right? Anything in red. Now chances are if pages are ranking really high, uh, there's usually not gonna be 404s, except for like these comments, right? There's no way you're gonna freaking replace that. So already this page is a fail, right? When I go to the next one, like this, do the same thing. So again, we're gonna be just sitting here like a Fiverr worker or Upwork worker, just looking for broken links, right? That's gonna take a really long time. So if you were to actually do this method, you'd probably just wanna to go to Ahrefs, scan the site in general that has like an article similar to yours, like let's say brought back Linko. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go into uh, Best Buy Links. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. Outgoing Links, Broken Links. And then this is gonna be all of the broken links on his site. 
So that's how you'd want to do it. You wouldn't want to use this weird, like, just scan manually. That would take forever to do. Know about their broken link and offer your content as a replacement. For example, when I find a broken link on someone's site, I send them this email. Note how personalized my email. Hi, I was searching for some information on SEO and I came across your awesome SEO checklist. Great stuff. Uh, I especially like that you recommend starting keyword research off with buyer personas. So many people start with a keyword research tool before they even know what their customers search for. However, I did come across a few links that didn't seem to be working. Want me to forward you the short list I jotted down. So basically he's saying uh, a compliment. So many people start with a keyword research tool before they even know what their customers search for. However, I did come across a few links. Want me to, so I guess that's kind of good to do like the two step where you're asking them to, if they want to see the links that you found. But even then you have to realize that most people who are going to be even replacing links in the first place are going to just go scan for the links and then fix them. Since you're kind of doing some sort of weird blackmail stuff. Email is the more you personalize your email, the more links you'll get. Anyway, when they replied to my message, I sent them the URL of the broken link. I also pitched my SEO tools post as a replacement for the dead link. And because I added value first, then asked for something in return, people were happy to link to me. And now it's time for strategy number three, build links from podcasts. A few months ago, I was checking out where one of the sites in my niche got their backlinks from. And I noticed that a big chunk of their backlinks came from going on podcasts. So I decided to become a guest on as many podcasts as I could. In fact, I appeared on over 50 podcasts over the next year and a half. Not only did these podcasts send some serious traffic my way, but they resulted in tons of high quality backlinks. Okay, so let's talk about this. So some random person outreaches you and they wanna be on your podcast. You're probably not gonna do it, but if Brian Dean outreaches, so a lot of these things that he's recommending it's like, obviously he's going to get a bunch of links from podcasts because he, people are going to want to mention that they were on, he was on her, their podca podcast. The problem with this stuff is that most people who need links are the people who don't already have a bunch of authority, right? You don't really see people who have a bunch of authority needing to do link building because they can rank without links because they have so much authority already. If you put a post on Entrepreneur, you don't even need a link to it. You can just rank it. So again, a lot of this stuff is just like, you know, it's, it's probably going to work for him, but you know, doing manual outreach like this, a lot of people are not going to want to answer your stuff, dude. Even when people outreach to me who have authority, I, I get pissed at them because I just don't, I don't have the time to just go replace a link on my site for them. Moving right along to our next technique, create branded strategies and methods. A few years ago, I was searching for some productivity tips and it came across this post by Merlin Mann. In this post, Merlin outlines something called Inbox Zero, a productivity approach where you use your inbox as your to-do list. But that wasn't what grabbed my attention. What shocked me was that this simple idea generated over 5,000 backlinks. And when I looked over those backlinks, I noticed a pattern. Most people link to the page because it outlined a strategy with a unique name, Inbox Zero. That's when I decided that I would try naming my strategies too. So the next time I talked about a strategy on my blog, I called it the skyscraper tech. Okay, so this right here is a really good idea and this doesn't even have to do with actually link building. This just has to do with being really good at branding, which has, ends up happening, uh, leading to organic links, which I'm a huge fan of. So basically you just coin a method like he's saying, and then use that as a way to have people link to you based on you being like somebody who coins something that other people are talking about already, but it's a better way to say it. So this right here, this is genius. And, and it's something that Brian Dean does very well. And you know, the skyscraper technique is a great, great example of being able to create content that um, people really picked up on and sort of made it into a, something that you know, people are gonna be constantly referencing him on. Technique. So, how did it go? The post where I first mentioned the skyscraper technique has been linked to over 9,000 times. And if you look at those links, 90% of them are due to the fact that I gave my strategy a unique branded name. 
Okay, moving right along to strategy number five, become a source for reporters and bloggers. Here's the deal. If you wanna rank on the first page of Google today, you need to build links from authority news sites and blogs in your industry. Fortunately, this isn't as hard as it probably sounds. In fact, it's very doable thanks to a free service called Harrow. Harrow is like a dating site for public relations. Harrow connects bloggers and journalists that need sources to people that want links and press mentions. And I've personally used Harrow to build links from mega news sites like entrepreneur.com. To be clear, this strategy takes work and it's not always easy. But in my experience, it's one of the best ways to build quality backlinks at scale. With that, let's dive into the step-by-step -step process. First, register as a source. Once you're signed up, you'll get three emails a day from reporters looking for sources like this. And when you find a request that seems like a good fit, send them your pitch. For example, a while back I saw a hire request from someone that wanted to know what's the difference between graphic design and web design. So I submitted this pitch and I got this sweet link. I mean, the thing is you have to realize with this stuff, like there's going to be hundreds of people competing for being able to get links like this. So, I mean, here's the thing. If you're going to be like an expert in link building and that's all you freaking do. And like, this is like your way of like being able to just create like awesome relationships with like other publishers and you can seriously bring in traffic and, and, and actual like value by having these articles mention you, then I think that maybe it's a good idea. But even then it's more for the value of actually creating like, you know, being able to show yourself on really valuable websites, um, not just for the purpose of a link, but also for the purpose of really just being able to be mentioned in those things, like um, being able to show that you've been mentioned an entrepreneur um, and actually hopefully get, you know, people seeing your stuff because of that. From Rasmussen.edu, which is an authoritative EDU domain. Not bad. Next up, we have strategy number six, pre-outreach. A while back, one of my readers, Emil, was getting ready to publish this epic piece of content. And Emil realized that his post had the potential to rank number one in Google for his target keyword. But for that to happen, he'd need to build links. So Emil decided to promote his post before he even published it. This is known as pre-outreach. Here's how it went down. First, Emil found blogs that wrote about employee wellness and he sent them this message. Because he didn't beg for a link, most of the people that Emil talked to were happy to hear from him. Then, once Emil's post went live, he sent a link to everyone that responded to his first email. And that led to a bunch of social shares and a nice contextual backlink. With that, it's time for strategy seven, EDU. So he made the post, got one backlink after all this outreach and got some social shares. Again, it just doesn't seem worth it. And, and honestly, that page was going to be able to rank regardless. That was a mega skyscraper. The, the guy went from uh, like top 20 I, well, employee wellness ideas. That was like the number one thing ranking to like, what was it? Like 200 or something. So obviously he's going to end up ranking it. Like he could have done it without content. I mean, without links. EDU resource page link building. It's no secret that links from EDU websites are super powerful. The question is, how do you actually get university sites to link to you? EDU resource pages. Here's how it works. Most universities have resource pages. Where so EDU backlinks are like one of the most manipulated backlinks because so many people can just buy them basically. And EDUs are supposed to be more powerful. I think Google's actually picked up on this and I really would try to stay away from this method like 100% over pretty much all the other methods. Um, because I think Google actually looks for uh, websites that are trying to manipulate EDU backlinks. Where they link to content that could help their students and faculty. Here's an example of a resource page that links to content about nutrition and supplements. For example, let's say you have a website about nutrition. First, you wanna find resource pages like the one I just showed you. To do that, pop these search strings into Google. Then look to see if a piece of your content would be a good fit for that page. Finally, email the person that runs that resource page this proven script. Now, keep this in mind. Only about 5% of the EDU sites that you reach out to will actually add your link. That's the bad news. The good news is even one or two of these links can make a massive difference in your Google rankings. 
For example, I recently used this strategy to get a link from this resource page on the University of Michigan website. And that single link made a significant dent in my organic traffic. If you thought that was cool, wait until you see strategy number eight, the moving man method. The moving man method is simple. First, find web pages, resources, or businesses that are outdated, just rebranded, or recently changed names. Then find sites that are still linking to these outdated resources. Finally, let people know that they're linking to something that's out of date. Let me show you how this works with a real life example. A while back, I read that a website for a big SEO agency suddenly shut down. This meant they had- So basically what you have to do here is you have to stumble upon some random business that just got shut down and hope that you can get all of the links pointed to you before it's too late. Had tons of pages on their site that weren't working anymore. Pages that lots of people were still linking to. Specifically, I noticed that an infographic about SEO on their site wasn't working anymore, which was perfect because I had just published my own SEO focused infographic. Nice. nice. So that was the first step. Next, I had to see who actually linked to this infographic. So I fired up Ahrefs and pulled all of their links. Finally, I emailed everyone that still linked to that infographic. I let them know that the image wasn't working anymore. I also let them know that my infographic would make a great replacement for the blue glass one. And as you can see, people were more than happy to link to me. Speaking I mean, honestly, I've tried all of these methods. Like when I first started doing SEO, I was like, oh, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try to do this. I've tried all the stuff that Brian talks about in this. And I'm telling you, like, it, it's just not worth the time. Like, it's not. Speaking of infographics, it's time for our last link building strategy, Guestographics. Last year, Backlinko reader Matt Lowry had a problem. Matt runs Yellow Octopus, an e-commerce site in Australia that sells gifts. And he quickly realized something. It's really hard to build links to e-commerce sites. After all, who would want a link to a site that's made up of 100% product and category pages. That's when Matt realized to build links to his site, he'd need to publish awesome content. So what did he do? First, Matt put together an epic piece of content, an ultimate guide to Australian gin. This guide contained everything someone would wanna know about gin from Australia in one place. Now, of course, Matt didn't just sit back and wait for the links to roll in. He promoted his content with email outreach. Because Matt reached out to the right people, and sent them personalized emails, some people even offered to link to his guide. And all these backlinks boosted Matt's rankings for a keyword that his customers search for every day, Australian gin. His content even shows Can we talk about this for a second? Did you hear what he just said? He said, because he wrote a good email and people liked his content, they linked to him. I mean, come on find guest posting opportunities with Google Images. That's right, I said guest posting. Now, a lot of people say that when it comes to building links, guest posting is dead. But is it true? Not really. In fact, when you're just starting out, guest posting is one of the best ways to build links to your site. For example, when I first started Backlinko, I guest posted like a madman. I wrote over 50 guest posts and interviews in about a year. And the links I got from guest posting gave my organic traffic a nice early boost. That said, I was very strategic about things. I made sure to only write guest posts for quality sites in my niche. So if you run a site about the paleo diet and write a guest post for a site about iPhones, that's gonna look spammy. But when you write mind-blowing guest posts for quality sites in your industry, those links do help. The question is, how do you find sites to guest post on? Google Images. Here's the step-by-step -step process. First, find someone in your niche that writes a lot of guest posts. Second, grab the URL of the headshot that they use in their author bio. Finally, pop that URL into Google reverse image search. And boom, you get a list of places that guest posted presented to you on a silver platter. Very cool. So there you have it. Nine of my all time favorite link building strategies. If you learned some cool new stuff from today's video, make sure to subscribe to the Backlinko YouTube channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. And if you want exclusive SEO techniques that I... Okay, so the point is, guys, like, Brian Dean is very, very good at copywriting. 
and obviously he can build links. But at the end of the day, again, just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean you should. Uh, you know, you can do these things, and, and some of them will probably provide you value. But if you're focusing on just building a link rather than actually building traffic or building like authority or, you know, focusing on more than just, you know, a link, it, you're going to go a lot farther because money isn't just made by links. Money is made by creating actual value. And, you know, the, the problem with links is that when you end up becoming really good at building links, you end up generally suffering at being good at providing what people actually want. That's the biggest problem because on-page SEO is like 100% something that you can continually improve. You can always improve content. You can always improve on-page. You can always improve funnels. You can always improve um, building authority. And again, if you end up getting authority from building a link and from social shares or something like that, you know, good for you. But unless they're actually sending you traffic or it's actually like you're being mentioned on a huge website that um, is really going to be helping you, uh, you know, boost your authority really and not just in the sense of a link, I wouldn't be spending my time doing that. Now, again, if you're going to be able to like do a guest post on like entrepreneur or like I don't know, some site that's really big in your niche and you have the opportunity to do that, you know, go ahead and do it. But even for me, like, I don't really want to spend my time doing that stuff. So that's just how it is for me. And again, you know, it's because I've been able to spend three years without doing this stuff and be able to generate a bunch of traffic, a bunch of authority and a bunch of money without needing to do that for myself and for my clients.